Okay, so yeah, I'm going to talk about uh, how we can use mutations and deep learning to identify cancer type. Uh, so cancer develops as a process of somatic evolution, where cells acquire fitness advantages, often in the form of mutations that allow them to outcompete other cells. And over time, uh, this process of genetic diversification and selection leads, can lead to the development of cancer. And one of the most important events in the evolution of a tumor is metastasis, where cells from a primary tumor gain the ability to migrate to and colonize a different organ within the body. And metastasis is a major clinical challenge and it's the primary cause of cancer-related mortality. Because cancer has developed as a process of somatic evolution, metastases will contain uh, ancestral information about the primary tumor in the form of mutations that are common amongst the metastasis and the cells from the primary tumor that gave rise to the metastasis. Typically, metastases have additional mutations and are often uh, quite different from the primary tumor. And most of the time when a patient is diagnosed with metastatic cancer, it's relatively easy to determine what primary tumor site is. But in about three to 5% of new cancer diagnoses, a patient will present with a metastatic tumor and no obvious primary. And this is called the carcinoma of unknown primary and accounts for about 100,000 new diagnoses per year in North America. And because um, despite advances in precision medicine, the cell of origin and histopathology of a tumor are still the strongest determinants of its clinical behavior, it's important to try and determine what primary tumor site is. And this has driven people to try and use genomics to identify a primary tumor site. And the common intuition when we wanna use genomics to identify primary tumor site is to use alterations to cancer, cancer associated genes or driver mutations. And so here I have the classic model for the development of pancreatic adenocarcinoma. Uh, pancreatic cancer develops through mutations to uh, these four well-characterized genes. And so as an example, if you have a tumor of unknown origin and you see uh, these four mutations, there's some reason to think it might be pancreatic cancer. And while these methods have had some success, they're overly dependent on our knowledge of driver mutations, which relies heavily on our ability to detect signals of the positive selection from uh, sequencing data. And so rather than focus on driver mutations, I've recognized that the problem of identifying cancer type is really a problem of identifying cell type. And a defining feature of cell type is its chromatin state. And in fact, we can actually use the mutations in a tumor to encode the information about chromatin state. So in this figure, we have uh, chromosomal coordinates for chromosome two on the x-axis. Uh, the black line represents the, the number of, sorry, C to T mutations aggregated across all melanoma samples in TCGA. And the blue line represents uh, the degree of closed chromatin in a region. And this is closed chromatin for normal melanocytes, not uh, melanoma samples. And the really striking thing here is that there's a very high concordance between the black line and the blue line. Wherever we see an increase in mutation density, we also see an increase in closed chromatin. And what this tells us is that mutations accumulate more frequently in regions of closed chromatin. But more importantly, what this tells us is that regional mutation density actually tells us something about chromatin state, and therefore it tells us something about cell type. And since most mutations are past through mutations that are passed on over multiple cell divisions, uh, the, the regional mutation density of metastasis will actually tell us something about the chromatin state of a primary tumor. And we can represent this feature in a very simple way, and this is done by taking all the autosomes uh, and gluing them head to tail and splitting them each into one megabase bins. And in each bin, we count the number of somatic single nucleotide variants, and all other information about these mutations can be discarded. And pasture mutations can provide us with some additional cell type specific information by looking at the mutational processes active within a tumor. This is done using mutational signatures, which are constructed by looking at short range sequence contexts around a mutation. Uh, typically, the, the base is directly three prime and five prime around every single, single nucleotide variant. And when we do this across all uh, possible single base substitutions, we get uh, what are called 96 different mutation types, which can be decomposed into mutational signatures. And we have mutational signatures for a number of different processes. Some of these are uh, highly cell type specific. So as an example, if you have a tumor of unknown origin and it has a high amount of exposure to signature four, which is associated with tobacco smoke, there's some reason to think that it might be lung cancer. And so just to kind of reframe the original problem, the goal of this work is to use these features derived primarily from somatic pasture mutations to train a series of deep neural networks to identify cancer type. 
And to train the classifier, I use data from the pan cancer analysis of whole genomes or PCOG. And PCOG has collected whole genome sequencing of about 2,800 cancer samples across 39 uh, different cancer types. And in order to have enough training data, I restricted myself to 24 relatively common cancer types, each with, uh, uh, each with samples from at least 36 unique donors in PCOG. And this left about 2,600 samples in total for training, validation, um, and testing. And so here I'm just going to uh, quickly go over some of the results. So I've trained the model, uh, trained a, a deep neural network using these pasture-derived features. Um, and here I'm just su summarizing the performance of the best model. And this is averaged across uh, 10 different test splits. The predictions from the neural network are on the x-axis and the true cancer type is on the y-axis. The overall accuracy for the model is 91%, which is approximately twice as good as you uh, expect from a pathologist when uh, given, a mes given a metastatic sample and no knowledge of what the primary tumor is. Uh, F1 score is at least 0.83 for 20, uh, 20 of the 24 cancer types. And uh, when the classifier makes mistakes, they tend to have relatively simple biological explanations. So I'm just going to highlight here one of these examples, um, and this is the misclassifications between stomach cancer and esophageal cancer. These two cancers come from the same cell type of origin. They have common patterns of mutational exposures, uh, and there's some debate over the true origin of tumors that arise just at the gastroesophageal junction. And so it makes sense that given the input features to the classifier, it would make mistakes between these two cancer types. We see something similar when we look at misclassifications uh, between the two B cell malignancies. Once again, these two tumors are, uh, come from the same cell type of origin, have similar patterns of mutational exposures. And in the earliest version of this classifier, we had actually grouped these two cancer types as one. Despite these difficulties, the classifier does quite well in some other highly related uh, tissues. I'm highlighting here a classification of glioblastoma and pyeloastrocytoma. These tumors are both derived from glial tissue and uh, the classifier does a very good job of discriminating these two cancer types from each other. And we can see uh, similarly good performance when looking at classification of uh, kidney renal cell carcinoma and kidney chromophobe carcinoma. Um, of course, I've motivated this as a tool for identifying primary tumor site for metastases, so it's actually important that I tested on data from uh, metastatic tumors. So we were fortunate to receive whole genome sequencing of about 2,000 metastases from the Hartwig Medical Foundation in the Netherlands, and an additional 100 or so uh, metastatic pancreatic adenocarcinomas from Steve Gallinger at OICR. So despite the fact that um, these metastases were biopsied in a different uh, manner, had a different sequencing analysis uh, pipeline, um, and the fact that um, many of the samples were sequenced following exposure to chemotherapy, a classifier that was trained solely on mutations from primary tumors, it identified cancer type correctly with an overall accuracy of about 83%, uh, and it does a little bit better on cancer samples with more uh, examples, suggesting that some but not all of the misclassifications are due to uh, sampling bias. So just to quickly uh, summarize what I've shown, uh, I've presented a deep neural network trained primarily on information from past year mutations that can accurately discriminate between 24 common cancer types. The model has immediate clinical applicability in identifying primary tumor site for carcinomas of unknown primary. And we are currently exploring different avenues for testing it on uh, data in the clinic. And some work that I've done that I've had that I haven't had uh, the time to talk about is um, extending the model to greater than 24 cancer types and some uh, work that I've done on actually providing calibrated uncertainty estimates so that uh, in a clinical setting, people can know exactly how reliable the prediction of the classifier are. And so um, automatic out of distribution detection can be done. And yeah, I just want to thank um, 